Well, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. I, uh, uh, I'm very comfortable, and we've known each other for a long period of time, dating back almost uh, 30 or 40 years. And uh, it's, people wonder uh, in the outside world how you can be opposed to a person and still maintain a friendship. We have successfully done that, and I've always appreciated that. I, um, uh, Mr. Goffin, we all agree on the need for a safe and smart transition away from the leaded uh, AF gas, but we also must uh, ensure that there is no disruption in general aviation uh, in process. Uh, unfortunately, without a clean and clear transition, airports may begin unilaterally prohibiting the availability of leaded uh, avgas. And uh, I have a, quite an extensive background in aviation, so maybe I'm more sensitive to this than uh, most people. But I'd like to ask you in its consent to enter into the record the attached letter that uh, from the Avgas Coalition expressing serious concerns on the uh, unilateral decision of one airport uh, to prohibit the sale of leaded Avgas. Without objection, so ordered. Now, Mr. Coffin, I want to read the uh, question that I'll ask you, and there's a reason for that. Mr. Uh, Goffman, will you commit to fostering a safe and smart transition away from leaded uh, Avgas and working with the FAA and industry to ensure that fuels available today remain available until a solution is fully approved and widely available? Uh, <clears throat> Senator, thank you very much for that question because uh, I, I think uh, to the extent that EPA plays a role in all this, um, we are uh, wanting to avoid exactly what you were wanting to avoid, which is disruption um, uh, in the availability of airports and um, of, of flying options, um, including to, including to uh, individual pilots. Um, what we are trying to do is twofold. One is to uh, make a determination, first and foremost, of whether or not uh, lead from certain aircraft um, uh, is presenting a, a threat to public health and the environment. At the same time, once we get through that process, which still has a way to go and is essentially a scientific process, um, then we, if we determine that it is presenting a threat say to children living around airports, uh, then we will take the next step of addressing different options we might have um, uh, for uh, uh, dealing with that problem. And I think as part of that process, um, we would certainly be committed to finding a solution that works for everybody, including not disrupting um, uh, any transition um, from the current uh, Current current leaded fuel use to uh, to the to the to the next to the next so yeah, next. Mr. Goffman, that's and that's the very reason that I worded it the way I did, because uh, this disruption could be very uh, could be a problem for a lot of people, and I want to make sure that that is fully considered. And I I, I think your statement is a good response. Uh, now, as you know, the small refinery exemption provision that's found in the Clean Air Act um, um, were written to ensure small refiners uh, experiencing disproportionate economic hardship could obtain relief. Now, Oklahoma ranks among the, uh, the, the top uh, states that would be interested in a question uh, like this. In December of 2021, your office proposed blanket denials of 65 pending small refinery petitions. And in April, your office denied 37 small refinery petitions that were dating back to 2018. Uh, now, Mr. Goffman, considering that inflation is at 8.3%, is disproportionate economic hardship no longer considered when reviewing, re reviewing these petitions. Is that no longer used as a consideration, that type of uh, hardship? Uh, well, Senator, I'm, 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 glad you, I'm glad you 
ask that question because uh, it gives me a chance to uh, uh, give you an update on, on where we are and what is a, a complicated issue and one that uh, the federal courts across the country have, have weighed in on. Um, I think I understand why, given what people are facing at the pump right now, everybody would be wondering whether the actions we're proposing to take, and in some cases took, with respect to small refineries, is going to have an impact uh, in making matters worse for, for drivers. Um, I believe the answer is no, but what's really important is that in the last two or three years, a number of federal courts have handed down opinions about how we have implemented the small refinery exemptions. And basically the message they sent us is, EPA, you gotta pay attention to precisely what your authority to address hardship is and isn't. And you gotta pay attention to your own analysis of the impact of the RFS program on fuel markets. And basically, Senator, the courts have, tell, have been telling us to get our story straight. So what we were trying to do in December was to respond to those remands, lay out our thinking, lay out our analysis, and then ask the small refinery exemption applicants to respond to what we had proposed and provide additional information uh, in support of their applications. We still, as you, as you pointed out, have about 30 applications pending um, that we have not uh, made a decision on, although we uh, hope to and plan to issue uh, decisions on those applications shortly. Um, and in doing so, uh, really be clear once and for all as to what the law is, what our analysis shows, and then provide certainty for all stakeholders in the RFS program as to, as to what the road going forward um, uh, looks like. Well, as you know, the, uh, the small refinery exemptions uh, provision um, were written to ensure small refineries experiencing disproportionate economic hardship could obtain release, relief. What types, uh, has anything uh, uh, been released uh, so far that would directly address this? Mr. Goffman, I want to ask you to answer this question briefly because we have others that are waiting to ask questions. Yes, I think our proposal tried to provide, our December proposal, which you referred to, tried to provide a comprehensive uh, uh, explanation of, of, um, of how we now understand that authority, what it obligates us to do, and particularly what the federal courts have, have told us the limits of our authority um, uh, are. Yeah. Well, in December, the, you referred to your office. Senator, I'm going to ask you to wrap denials, up. Blanket denials of 65 pending small refinery petitions. Do you consider that um, a determination that was made in a very thoughtful way? And is this anything, uh, any finality to this, uh, that action? Again, please respond briefly. Yes to the first question. Was it thoughtful? Yes. It, was it? Was it the final word, so to speak, on this program? No, because we are going to continue to weigh each application on its own merits. 